as the head coach of the Owls. He's 9 and 21. And this season, 3 and 5, 2 and 4 in conference play. Bouncing on the sidelines, gives the return man, and we're ready to roll. Borregalis will put it in the air. Bright sunshine, Miami Gardens, Florida, at ACC football. Gives it to 10. Up the middle of the field, avoids a tackle at the 28. Here's Gibbs to the 40 and beyond, and still going. What a return to set the tone for Gibbs for Georgia Tech. All right, James Bates, time to check out our keys to the game, and they're brought to you by your local Ford dealer after the 41-yard return by Gibbs. For all the pioneers, I'm going way back. Miami style for Georgia Tech. You can't get enough of everlasting base. Rodney O and Joe Cooley, <laughs> they got to be powerful with some pop, create some turnovers, and they've got to win the battle in the trenches. For Manny Diaz, his team, he knows all about Jam Pony Express. They've got to be fast, and they'd like to be better from the start. That special teams play wasn't how to do it, though. Carter has the catch on the edge for four yards. On that play from Sims. Marcus Clark on the tackle for Miami. Opening moments of the first quarter. In the bright sunshine, it's Kyrick McGowan trying to turn that corner. And McGowan down by the 40-yard line. Eight yards for McGowan, Stevenson, and Kinchins on the tackle Miami. Well, and that'll go on the stat sheet for Jeff Sims, the freshman from Sandalwood High School up in the 904 Duval, Jacksonville, Florida. You mentioned the freshman off the top. He's a COVID freshman, started last year as well. This is Gibbs taking down Zach McLeod. That's a loss of two, and you heard... Wiley referenced Zach McLeod, the senior from Lantana, Florida. He's been around for quite some time. Look at him, just, just smarty, able to, uh, able to get up there on that defensive line and doesn't have to think too much. Sometimes as a football player, when you think, you stink. He can just pin his ears back, like Wiley said, and go make plays like he did there. Second and long for Sims. That pass to Jordan Mason, trying to break a tackle and get back to the 40. He won't. So that'll bring up third down. There's no gain. Here's our impact players brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Jeff Sims is going to have to spread it around today. Adonicus Sanders, one of those receivers. We'll get to those impact players maybe on the next drive or perhaps after this third down conversion. It's a big third down and long. They've been decent on third down and long. Really struggled third down and mediums here the last few weeks. Georgia Tech last in the conference on third down, and they won't get this one. Looking for Malachi Carter to tall and fourth down. Yeah, Jeff Sims has been better than that this year. He's got to make that throw right there. Could have gotten interesting had Malachi Carter been able to bring it down because the defender slipped right behind him. But instead, Miami gives a little and then forces a punt here at midfield. So the 41-yard return on the opening kickoff by Gibbs results in a punting situation for Georgia Tech. George is the deep man. Shanahan is the punter. George at the six makes the fair catch. Let's take a timeout when we come back. Miami on the field, and we'll see that offense for the first time this afternoon. This is ACC football from Miami Gardens. the holidays give is meant to be shared. It's the new traditions that lift us up and the way our celebrations are prepared. It's making room for all so that our world doesn't feel so small. It's when moments of light bring us closer than before and illuminate those we do it for. What we value most shouldn't cost more.
fuel your grind with Gatorade's proven formula and the right blend of electrolytes to help you on your journey to greatness. If you wake up thinking about the markets and want to make the right Get Decision Tech from Fidelity. Football is brought to you by CPI Security. CPI Home Security that protects what matters most. And by the Works Nitro, available at worksnitro.com. 71 degrees and sunshine in Miami Gardens. The Jackets and the Canes for the 26th time between these two programs. Sunshine taking care of us. Tom, it was a nasty last couple days in Nor'easter coming down through, still hitting parts of northern Florida, but we've got a sunshiny day and sunshine all around when Tyler Van Dyke is slinging that football like he has been the last couple of weeks. The freshman, and you know, interesting, very similar to early in that pit game, and too many times it seems they started with bad field position inside their 10, down near their own goal line. First snap from scrimmage last week was a big sack. A little fake to Knighton, and then Van Dyke bats that one down. Jared Ivey got a piece of that one. Here's our impact players, brought to you by your local Toyota dealers when the Canes have the ball, James. Talk to me, Johnny. Rambo, Charleston Rambo. Boy, has he been special for this offense. He's, he's giving this team a, a deep threat, scaring defenses. You've got to respect that every single snap. And then Keon White, word has it, we'll see him today. Van Dyke from his end zone. That's complete. Keyshawn Smith, first down yardage. Just shy of the 20-yard line, and they got 12. Well, an ugly first play, and just like last week, it goes to Keyshawn Smith to get out of that hole and scoring on that opening drive. Last two weeks, third down and 10 on opening drives and converting on both of them. Here's a big play defensively. Rambo on the other side of the field going nowhere. He got stopped by Zamari Walton, number seven in white for the sophomore from Melbourne, Florida. Loss of one. Miami with back-to-back -back wins as an unranked team against ranked opponents. Also had the win against number 18 NC State a couple of weeks ago. Last Saturday at number 17 Pitt. Then number 17 Pitt with the victory. 38-34. Interesting looking play there, James. Yeah, it was. Van Dyke a little, little pumped to act like it was a quarterback draw and just a play action, good coverage down the field. And the pressure's gonna come here on a delayed blitz from Quez Jackson. So a third down and 11. 41% on third down for the season, 10th in the ACC for the Miami Hurricanes. Four and four on the season, they've won two in a row, two and two in conference play. And they're three and two at home overall this season. Third and long for Van Dyke. Receiver tried to come back to it. A flag is out. Keyshawn Smith was a receiver. Wanye Thomas and Trey Swilling were back there. Swilling number three. Junior from New Orleans, Louisiana, and a flag came out. Pass interference. Defense number three. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. The voice of Gary Patterson, our referee for this afternoon's proceedings. Swilling doesn't like it. They go right at Trey Swilling. Stride for stride, and he, he feels like, you know what? If, if I'm even, I'm leaving. Swilling knows it. When that receiver gets even with you, and he puts his hand on him, they're trying to hit that back shoulder timing. Flag helps him move those chains, though. Here's Jalen Knighton, the freshman from Lauder Hill, Florida. Gets nothing on that carry. Knighton, though, 17 carries, 80 yards. A couple of rushing TDs, including a 40-yarder in the first quarter, and that win at Pitt. 
as Miami jumped out to a 31-17 halftime lead but got outscored 17-7 in the second half. Van Dykeman open over the middle into Georgia Tech territory for Jacoby George. Still couldn't bring him down. First down and 20 yards on the pass play. Tom, I mentioned earlier how you have to respect the deep threat of a Charleston Rambo, but you also have to respect the running of Jalen Knight in the last few weeks, and that's exactly what opens up that middle of the field. Linebackers got to step up and stop that run, but a play-action pass, and they burn him. Throwing again and complete. Brinson. Inside the 30 to the 29, Van Dyke is in rhythm. Back-to-back -back first downs. Van Dyke is in rhythm, and an offensive line in front of him that has finally found a rhythm of their own. We've talked about all the injuries on this team. De'Eric King, Harris at running back, but the offensive line has had to fill some gaps, too. And they'll run it with Knighton to the 15. That's another first down for the Canes. Down to the 14-yard line of Jalen Knighton with the rush, Kennard the tackle. The rooster, the rooster with the vision, good blocking up front, and then outrunning guys. And Tetanon getting up into the end zone. He's down inside the 10 after the 14-yard rush of the previous play for Knighton. Jordan Dominic on the stop, and the Canes are rolling, James. They can get a first down at the four-yard line. They're in the CPI security red zone. Knighton got hit by Ely. Ely and Quest Jackson both in there. Ely, the captain, transfer from Maryland. Brett Lashley, the offensive coordinator. Canes are eighth in the conference in red zone offense. 19 touchdowns. They score 82% of the time. This is the 11th play of the drive coming up right here. And again, they can get a first down at the four-yard line. Van Dyke to the end zone. It's a touchdown. Mike Harvey on the catch in that back corner, and he beat Wesley Walker. Eight yards on the play, and the Canes are on the board. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's good coverage, too, Tom. He's right there, and he had to drop it right over his shoulder, throws the rope to Harley there in the corner. A beautifully thrown football. And another fast start for Miami, but hiccups early in the drive, just like last week. Quarterback and company overcoming them and just marching right down the field with precision to score the first points of this football game. Beautiful throw. 11 plays on the drive. Borregales for the extra point. Harley with his third receiving TD. Van Dyke with his 13th TD toss of the season. No play pass necessary. Just a rope to the corner. Harley with three yards in three minutes and 39 seconds. And Harley has his third receiving TD of the season. Second longest scoring drive of the year. And look at Harley now. 158 carries. Third all-time James in Miami school history look at Harley but look at the company that he keeps are you kidding me Reggie Wayne Stacy Coley Lamar Thomas Michael Irvin Santana Moss that's incredible and what an incredible catch I didn't realize it live because of the shadows over there in the corner of the end zone on the other side of the field but watching that replay three is the magic number that pass by Van Dyke Absolutely pinpoint right over the shoulder pad of the defender and into the arm of his receiver, Mike Harley. All right, while we have a moment, let's get a message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro, powerful tools for any project with gas like power without the gas, fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. Georgia Tech. Second possession of the game. You recall that Gibbs returned the opening kickoff 41 yards, but the Yellow Jackets unable to harvest any points out of that opening drive. Coming off the loss at home last week, 26-17 against Virginia Tech. Sims 
at the 40 incomplete. Carter was the intended receiver, number seven. Marcus Clark was back there. Let's check uh, back on those impact players, James. All right, for Georgia Tech, Adonica Sanders had that game winner against Duke a couple weeks ago. And James Williams, how about Williams and Kitchens? Two freshman safeties. Williams, six foot five, 224 pounder. And both of them are big time in space. Tough to start freshman at safety when that's your last line of defense, but they're getting it done. Those are Toyota Impact players. Sims taken down by Corey Flagg Jr. There is no gain on the play. Third down, Georgia Tech. Canes fans and Canes alike starting to get kind of rowdy in here. Rocking the hard rock. And, you know, Jeff Collins' group, Jameer Gibbs with that opening kick return to set the tone perhaps, but they've squashed all of that Miami has. Let's see what they drop, dial up here on a third down and 10. Blitzers have come from everywhere in this situation. Dave Patnode is the offensive coordinator for the Yellow Jackets, and they're staring fourth down to the face again off of the fingertip of Kyrick McGowan. Clark was back there defensively, some activity post whistle as well. It is fourth down for Georgia Tech. Jeff Sims off the mark a little bit here early. You saw the comeback, the miss on the opening play of this drive. Hit the ground and then this one as well. Well, even earlier on that first drive down near midfield on a third down. Sims has been very accurate early in this season, but not the way he's starting this game here today. Shanahan punts. This is George to meet it at the 41 with the fair catch. And good field position for Miami for its second possession. His precision on that touchdown throw, that's not the only sport he plays that requires precision. How about golf? He shoots in the mid-70s on the links. And he, when I asked him what's his favorite thing to do outside of football, he said hit the golf course. And it's a sport he says that has taught him to be a better quarterback by taking it one shot at a time. I, I know we've all had our days out in the links where we struggle to find our swing. For Tyler, it's the same thing on the football field where he sits here and says, hey, one throw at a time. It's a sport that was handed down to him from his father and his grandfather. And, well, he plays football in the fall, and on the spring, uh, he'll be playing 18. Wiley, you forgot the best part. We were talking with his offensive coordinator yesterday, Brett Lashley, and he said, well, he didn't tell you why he likes golf so much. The real reason is he's dating a young lady on our golf team here. So there you go. That's the real deal. That's the real story. He's going to be playing a lot of golf when he's not playing football. Nothing wrong with that. Well, Basie, I wanted to make sure you had a chance to break that news. I, I wanted to save something on the bone for you. All right. All right. Great conversation with Rhett Lashley yesterday. This will be Knighton down the sideline. Knighton bumped out of bounds near the 35-yard line. Walton and Carpenter trying to chase down Knighton. 23 yards, James. Well, just look at the speed. Good blocking to get the edge right there. They block Quest Jackson, unable to get outside and turn him back in, and it's off to the races. Just gets that corner turned so fast. They need a rooster button here on the uh, public address system. <laughs> Every time you make it to a big play. This one's down by the goal line and bounces. There are no flags on the play. Smith was the receiver swilling the defender. They call him Rooster because in his Pop Warner days, up in uh, Lauderdale, Hill, Florida, Deerfield Beach High School where he went, his coach Dave Williams used to have a, a red mohawk, so they called him the rooster and it stuck. But wouldn't that be great? Every time he makes a big play, say over 10 yards, just hit that button and hear <laughs> Put it in the suggestion box. Okay. It's on the way out. Where do I go? Yeah, uh, Knighton, 17 carries at 80 yards a week ago. Slams into that Georgia Tech D led by Wanye Thomas. Junior from Niceville, Florida, and a loss of one. Nice penetration by the defense. And there you see, just, just being physical right off the snap. Really, Ace Ely starts that. He won't get the tackle stat, but he made it happen. Uh-oh. Van Dyke to the end zone with an open man. Touchdown, Miami. Charleston Rambo.
end zone. For Agalis to make it 14 nothing Miami. Flags are out. You know, this is a similar situation in Georgia Tech defensively last week. Remember, against Virginia Tech, we had the game All a couple side. busts. Defense, half a distance to the goal. Still the try. Andrew Thacker, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, befuddled at the moment. In fact, on that first drive to open the game for Miami, after Georgia Tech punted, that was the first time Thacker's defense had given up points of any kind on an opening drive this season. And now they've allowed touchdowns on both of the Miami possessions in the first quarter. Borregales banging it through. 14-0 Canes, James. So again, down bottom of your screen, it looks like Wesley Walker, Zamari Walton, and a mix-up. Walton thinking he's got help over the top in Walker, and Walker bailing out, and it's just too easy. Dropping it in there, Tyler Van Dyke to the transfer from OU, Rambo. And you better be on your toes, and you better know where number 11 is. I talked earlier about respecting that deep threat. Well, that means you gotta find him. You gotta know where he is at all times. 35 yards, the big play, and how about the big plays from this Miami football team? Last week, they go up against a pit team that was best in the ACC, holding teams away from those explosives. To not the 20 or, or more yard plays. I think they gave up 11 total, and the number something like five 20 plus yard plays in the first dozen snaps for Miami last week, so they just keep on coming with those big plays, and we still haven't seen a few other big playmakers like Restrepo, who's been fantastic the last few weeks. Mallory and Arroyo, a couple really good tight ends. And Miami already, they've got two runs over 10 yards and three passes over 15 yards. This will be Gibbs from the one. Up to the 20, a flag comes out on the return by Gibbs. So there is a penalty marker. During the return, legal block in the back. Number eight, return team. After this, to the goal. First down. Things are getting worse for Georgia Tech while things are getting better for Miami, especially recently with the two wins against ranked opponents. Miami started, James, with the win against then number 18, NC State. And that victory, 31-30, and the celebration is on. Yeah, Rambo was huge against the Wolfpack in that win. How would they respond, this young team? After beating a top 25 team, going on the road, playing it fit? Shoot, no let up at all. They got after it from the giddy up. And the big question for Manny Diaz this week was, okay, you've got Florida State next week. Is this a trap game after those two big wins? It certainly doesn't look like it at the beginning of this football game. Georgia Tech and Jeff Sims backed up to start this drive. Gibbs on the handoff. Got five yards on the rush. Back-to-back -back wins against ranked opponent for Miami for the first time since 2017 when they defeated Virginia Tech and then number three, Notre Dame. And they've built a 14-0 lead with 6.45 to go in the first quarter. Sims and company need to make something happen. Miami does it defensively with Stevenson on the hit. Four yards on the pass play. That was complete to Sanders. Stevenson made the play defensively, the sophomore from Miami. Well, you read it and you react. And Stevenson definitely has the athletic ability when he does read it to react as quick as a hiccup. He had the second quarter interception last week against Pitt. Just the second interception that Pickett has thrown all season long. Here's a third and short. Through the line, up past the 20, Jordan Mason. That's five yards and a first down, and the sticks are moving for Georgia Tech and Mason. Well, they love Jordan Mason in these short yardage situations. Remember, it was J.P. Mason that won the game two years ago in overtime. Short yardage situation right here in Miami, 2019. He's great in pass situations, best pass blocker in the backfield for Georgia Tech. That was a 28-21 victory in OT. 
That's complete to Carter. Georgia Tech, James, in that game in 2019, a fake punt for a TD pass, a recovered fumble in the end zone, and a blocked Miami field goal in the final seconds of regulation to get it to OT. Well, special teams and special teams could return to start this game here today, but they haven't been able to move it on offense. Sims just tosses it out. Gibbs. That's up near the 28 or 29 yard line and four yards on the play. James Williams, the freshman. Yeah, and, and Sims can make it a little bit easier on him. Good job by Gibbs to go back and turn around and get his shoulders back square, but help him out, put that ball out in front of him where he's got a full head of steam and he picks up a first down instead of creating another third down and short. Georgia Tech going to some of these dump passes, a little bit of this run game, and, and you wonder if they're trying to get Jeff Sims calmed down and get that accuracy back that we've seen so often early in the year. Third and short up the middle, Jordan Mason. Mason inside the 20, and he won't be caught. Jordan Mason, 71 yards to the end zone on third and short for Georgia Tech. What a huge play, Tom. This Georgia Tech team had zero. With all the momentum in the house all belonged to the guys wearing the green uniforms. And they needed to just put a drive together, give their defense a little bit of a break. Instead, they break it out on a third down and short. Big time play, great job up front. Mason goes 71 yards. In that game in 2019, James, he had a career rushing day for 141 yards. He finishes off this drive, 71 yards for the TD. Watch him here as, as they, they trap on McLeod and a great job there in the middle. Mikey Minahan and Ryan Johnson and company. It's been an offensive line that's been banged up. And then J.P. Mason, usually the big plays have gone the way of Jameer Gibbs, number one, but a guy who's meant so much to this offense and this football team, a great leader. Jordan Mason cutting that lead in half and putting the jackets back in the game. Career long rush for Mason. Basically untouched, James, and running away from Stevenson with a diving attempt. Listen, every snap thing, a couple guys there on that defensive front just catching blockers. You've got to put some pop on them. You've got to take it to them. A little bit of penetration. Now they need that defense to get out here and see if they can shut down the TVD show. First rushing touchdown of the season for Mason goes for 71 yards and Georgia Tech right back in this one. Restrepo will stay in the end zone. 28 of 42 kickoffs, touchbacks for Borregales. Yeah, it was big not only you talk about the momentum of this game right here as you look at those last two games and how impressive this offense has been for Miami. But we talked about it last week during the Virginia Tech broadcast with this Georgia Tech team, Tom. It, it was a game that they really, they needed to win to take that next step. You know, hey, we're close to doing this, we're close to doing that. They needed to beat a Virginia Tech team that's been down, but they were unable to do it at home. So coming into this game, you wondered how they were going to respond as well. Little toss forward to Smith. And he got cut down. Charlie Thomas, number 25, and white and old gold. Loss of two. Nice job, not only by Thomas, but Tobias Oliver fighting to get that outside pad free. Not to get blocked there on the edge so he can turn that ball back into his buddies. Got 10 other white hats coming from the inside. Nobody help on the outside. Good job by Oliver. Van Dyke has two TD passes in this game through three against Pitt. This throw near the 45 deflected 
and incomplete as it hits the natural grass surface here at Hard Rock Stadium. Nice play here to come underneath and, and, and aggressive as well. Wesley Walker, if you're going to go for that interception, you better be sure you can pick it and not just knock it away. And he was in good position, good enough to go for the pick, but off his fingertips, Tyler Van Dyke, lucky to have that one back. And Georgia Tech needs to put a little bit more pressure on Van Dyke. They didn't sniff him that time. It's a third down and long right here. Two for two on third down in the game for Miami. Looking left for Van Dyke. Separation and the diving attempt by Smith. Just beyond his reach, Wesley Walker was trying to stay with him. Personal foul, roughing the passer, high hit on the quarterback. Number six, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Six is Keon White for Georgia Tech with a personal foul. Well, the poor guy has been so anxious to get out there. First, the coverage. Banging a little bit, swilling left behind. But here's, here's Keon White. Goes hands to the face, and that's the, that's the penalty they'll call. And it's a guy that transferred from ODU that they've been dying to get back out there. And he has been, too, as you see, a little bit too aggressive, helping him out. Quick pass, Van Dyke, Rambo, 35-yard line. And take it down near the 30. Ball came out at the end of the play. It's Georgia Tech football. Looked like Miles Sims came up with the ball for Georgia Tech. Well, how about this play? A punch in the gut there on third down. You think you give him a freebie, and then they come up with the big hitter to Rambo, and as he switches that hand to the outside arm, it's a great hustle play to knock it out. And Wesley Walker, who's been so active here early in this game, forcing the fumble. And for Georgia Tech, what a huge turnover. They have not forced a turnover in eight quarters, and they needed to make it happen. There's the everlasting base, the big boom, the big hits that I was talking about. Let's see if they can go and tie this football game up now, trailing by seven. Miami was on the move again. Now it's Sims on the move, falling backwards across the 30-yard line from the freshman quarterback from Jacksonville, Florida, who picks up seven. There are penalty markers on the play. Yeah, helmet went rolling. I mean, there, there was, and this was like down at the 40. This was, was after the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 12, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Number 77 for Georgia Tech and remain in the game. First and 10. Devin Cochran, his helmet came flying off. He's 77. And the personal foul, it's just, you know, and, and these are things, the, the late hit on the quarterback, hey, being a little bit aggressive, but it, you just can't do that. You can't hurt your football team. And given offense that's had trouble moving the football, watch up top. There you see the extracurricular. We got no food. We got no jobs. Our pets' heads are falling off. <laughs> Tafari Harvey flag for that personal foul for the Canes. Georgia Tech with that fumble recovery since 2019. 27 fumble recoveries, James. Fourth most in the football bowl subdivision, and they needed that turnover. The question is, can they convert that into points and really change the momentum of this game? It was all Miami early going, 14 nothing. 71-yard TD run Jordan Mason. And now Manny Diaz and the Canes have a fight on their hands. Second and long, Georgia Tech. Six of nine through the air and 26 yards for Sims. Got some company in that backfield, and now Georgia Tech. It's the first timeout for Georgia Tech. 2.21 to go in our first quarter. Mason leads the way rushing, three carries, 78 yards. The 71-yard touchdown run, a career long for Mason. This is Dave Patton Ode. Talking with his quarterback and his offensive unit. Coach Pat Node really thinks that Sims is turning a corner this season, especially when he makes a call on fourth down, James, and they throw it into the end zone on fourth down against Virginia Tech. And Sims throws a perfect pass to McGowan for a touchdown. Well, we've had this Georgia Tech team, Tom, a couple times, and we've watched, I mean, he... 
He dissected that Duke defense, just took them apart. And this is a, a different defense here for Miami, but he's off the mark a little bit. And, and you got to wonder if there's if he's maybe dealing with a little bit of an injury or something like that. I don't know, but he's just he doesn't look like the Jeff Sims that was putting the ball in all these spots early in the year. Just throws this one towards his own bench area. He did miss most of the first three games of the season with a left arm injury. Johnson was providing the pressure for Manny Diaz defense. So they'll back it up. Treat it like a fumble as it went. Behind them. All right, so just gives this hard rock crowd a little bit longer to get lathered up and ready for this big third down and 15. Yeah, James, that last play, a backward pass and a loss of seven for Georgia Tech. Two for four on third down. Last two games, Miami strong on third down, holding their opponents to 32%. This pass by Sims in a congested area. It's intercepted at the 35-yard line. Avante Williams across midfield. And Williams taken down. Get that chain ready, James. <laughs> well, you talk all you want about James Williams and how physical he is, but it doesn't stop right there just because of the big body. You think defensive coordinator head coach Manny Diaz fired up about that turnover chain about the pop out, but it's it's being aggressive and it's playing physical, playing like a giant out there. And Avante Williams, the backup to Kinchins, just reads this and just goes right through the receiver. Who wants it more? Go up and high point the ball. That's how you do it. There you go. Yeah. Boy, that might be the prettiest one yet. Huh? 31 yard return to the first interception of the season for Avante Williams, and he dons the chain. So Van Dyke back on the field. His last pass to Rambo on the previous drive fumbled and recovered by Georgia Tech. So now both teams with the turnover in this game. Georgia Tech, a couple big plays. The kickoff return up to near midfield to start the game, unable to take advantage. Then a turnover with Miami driving, unable to take advantage. Van Dyke's pass complete to Arroyo. He's down near the 20 yard line. That's first down yardage for Elijah Arroyo. Uh oh, uh -oh balls Wait, out. Again? That is the ruling on the field. Wesley Walker, James. You heard the announcement. Wesley Walker, who forced the fumble on the Rambo catch. That ball's out. Watch that left knee. There we go. Left knee is going to be important. Previous play is under the review. Tariq Carpenter with the hit, Wesley Walker with the cover as the ball squirted away. This would be the best angle right here. Oh, that, oh, wow. Tom. I guess the question is the left knee, right, James? Oh, right there. See the ball come out. Was the left knee down? We're going to get a good look at it right here. Right here, okay. Watch the left knee. Arroyo. Oh, that that one's tricky. That first angle is, is is where we need to see another look because I think that one right there, we need one more look at it, but I, I think that left knee is down. Right here, I think, is our best look. Watch the left knee. Knee is down. Here comes the ball. Mm. Now, again, the ruling on the field was fumble Miami, recovery Georgia Tech. You must have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, which on the field is possession Georgia Tech.
be the second time Georgia Tech was able to jar the football loose on the tail end of a pass play. On the last drive, it was Rambo. This time, it's Arroyo. Is the ball out? Knee is down right now. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Fumble recovered by Georgia Tech. Not enough evidence present, according to Gary Patterson. So the fumble by Rambo recovered Georgia Tech, and now Elijah Arroyo. And in both instances, Miami was rolling down the field. So Georgia Tech with another fumble recovery and continuing to add to that total one of the best in the football bowl subdivision with two recoveries. Wesley Walker had the one just a moment ago. Well, it was an early start. Turnovers for everyone. So back to Sims. Ooh. Near the 20. Dangerous pass. It's a six-yard pass play to Adonica Sanders. Sanders had four catches for 64 yards and a touchdown last week against Virginia Tech. That was a loss for Jeff Collins in the Yellow Jackets 26-17. Balanced attack last week. 183 yards passing. 183 yards running. 112 yards in total for Georgia Tech so far. This will add to the total for Sims. That's first down yardage and the 30-yard line and more. James, you get the feeling that if Miami can sustain drives, they're going to have a chance to put a lot of points on the board, but they've fumbled the last two times. Timeout, injured Miami player. McLeod is down after the 13-yard run by Sims. I hate to see that. McLeod, so much fun to watch. Remember the former linebacker for Manny Diaz, and he was he was talking yesterday. He's like, you know, I, I was telling him at practice just last week, how many balls have I thrown to you? Know, interception drills. That over six years, not very often you get a chance to coach guys for six years. And he's talking, Zach McLeod is such a, a special human being. And it's meant so much to him to be around him, not just as a football player, but as a young man for six years. There you see Manny Diaz with him out there right now. Looked like he got tangled up with his teammate Jonathan Ford at the tail end of that tackle. And so they attend to Zach McLeod, the senior. It all over the field in that first quarter, but only coming up with 14 points with a couple of turnovers. Georgia Tech also through an interception. Jameer Gibbs on the rush for three. Here we go, 14-7, starting the second quarter. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Wiley Ballard, and our outstanding ACC College Football Production crew with you from Miami Gardens and Hard Rock Stadium. Home of this program since 2008. This facility opened up in 1987. College Football National Championship game here a season ago with Alabama beating Ohio State. And the BCS National Championship game has been here four times as well. This is Sims on the rollout into the sunshine. Sails that one into his bench area. Flag with the pressure. Here's the numbers for the first 15 minutes, James Bates. All right, pretty even as far as the plays go. And then the four penalties from Georgia Tech. A little bit costly, but not quite as costly as the tur two turnovers. For Miami, here comes another third down, by the way, Georgia Tech in that first quarter. Two of five. And Tyler Van Dyke and the Canes, a perfect two of two. Making a little bit of noise, third and medium. The bugaboo for Dave Patnode's offense here. The medium yardage third down conversions haven't been there as of late. Sims is passed with an open man at the 45-yard line. And out of bounds, Malachi Carter. Junior on the catch, Marcus Clark defensively. Looks like there's a penalty marker yeah. on the far side of the field as well. Well, it's it's going to be late. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 81, defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic, first down. Again, it's one thing to be aggressive. We were just patting Miami on the back for doing a better job of cutting down on the penalties. Carter is out of bounds now, and, and we got a couple steps to pull up. So Harrison Hunt, costly penalty to tack on some yards after that third down conversion. Senior from Middle Village, New York. 
And that puts the ball at the 37 yard line of Miami for Georgia Tech. Sims hung on to it, broke a tackle, spins at the 30 yard line. So Sims inside the 30 on the carry. Got eight yards and hard earned. Chance Williams on the tackle, 33 in green. Just a little bit of want to there from Jeff Sims. Looked like he was going to be dropped for no gain. Instead, you're looking at a second down and two, and that sure opens up the playbook quite a bit more for Patino. Williams in for the injured Zach McLeod. And this is Gibbs weaving his way, and Gibbs takes it to the end zone. 29 yards, and the Yellow Jackets an extra point away from tying this football game here in the second. You freeze some of the defenders with the fake on the jet sweep and then just washed down that entire left side of the offensive line for Georgia Tech. Just winning the battle and washing down that defensive front for the Hurricanes. And Gibbs getting into the paint as well. Third rushing touchdown of the season for Gibbs. Samaglia ties us up. Not throwing the ball like they have earlier this season. So let's run it. And boosted uh, by that word of encouragement early this morning. Absolutely, Wiley. And, you know, it's, it's a little bit cliche. You hear it quite a bit in football. Big-time players making big-time plays. But they've got some big-time players, some, some athletes that they've recruited to Georgia Tech. And Jeff Collins reminding them that they are... They are big-time college football players, and it's time to start making some of those big-time plays. But I will say this, not just about Georgia Tech, but both teams. These teams are two teams that haven't given up throughout this season. Even if things aren't going their way, they've continued to fight, and Georgia Tech has shown that early here today. Georgia Tech now with 133 yards as a team on the ground. A couple of TDs. They're averaging over 11 yards per rush, and now... Tyler Van Dyke and the Canes, who, in all honesty, James, in that first quarter, taking a 14-0 lead, it looked like they were cruising. But then a couple of fumbles late in plays after receptions as they were moving the ball down the field. And this game has turned around. Absolutely. It looked like we were going to earn our money in the second half. They might take care of us here. Knighton. Nothing there on first down for Jalen Knighton. Quez Jackson on the tackle. We'll say that a lot during the course of the game. First in the conference in tackles per game, 10.4 per game for Quez Jackson, the junior from Fort Valley, Georgia. Van Dyke from the pocket. Incomplete. Keyshawn Smith. Nobody around. You've got to secure that football. First things first. Secure it. Nice route. Ball's waiting on a boot. But he's, he's so anxious to get it turned up and make something big happen. Mm. Wants that one back. The freshman from San Diego. Big time receiver. Here's a third and long. Pass complete at the 30. They needed the 35-yard line. It's going to be about a yard short for Will Mallory. Tariq Carpenter made the tackle. So it'll be fourth and short. Van Dyke is coming to the sidelines. They did get 10 yards in the previous play, but it's not going to be enough. Crowd wants him to go. Well, it, it, and I, I think this is the right call right here. It's as much as, as you want to see him be aggressive. You're, you're deep in your own territory inside the 35. And for the most part, Georgia Tech has struggled to move the football and march down the field. So why give them the short field if they get a stop? Headley, the Australian punter. Rugby style action from the 22 yard line. Zende Ray on the short return. Let's take a timeout. How about this action in the second quarter? And tied up, 14 all. Update with Wiley Ballard. Yeah, we saw Zach McLeod come off the field uh, favoring uh, his lower left leg, it appears. They're saying he's being evaluated further. He saw him on the bike earlier. He's got a black brace now on his left knee, but they say his return is likely. So good news for the Canes. Yeah, look at him moving over there. That's great to see. Holding your breath if you're a Canes fan and just a 
fan of outstanding young men, as Manny Diaz describes Zach McLeod. So good to see him moving around a little bit back there on the bench. His defense is out on the field right now. It's a big game for both of these teams. Miami trying to keep its hopes alive for a Coastal Division Championship. And Georgia Tech just trying to get past that three-win threshold. They've won three games in each of Coach Collins' last two seasons. And that is such an important hurdle for this program, according to Coach Collins. Smith. James, we've done so many Georgia Tech games, and yes, we hear the same thing, but it's true. Coach Collins tells us just a couple of plays away. I mean, really, and we talked about their close losses. Four losses by fewer than 10 points each this season. Well, and, and you know, maybe most notably is, is up there at Virginia come roaring back in that 48-40 loss where they recovered two onside kicks. There's a third down and five. Kane's trying to get off the field here. Sims. Pass a little bit behind the intended receiver, a tight end, Dylan Leonard. That's off his hands, hitting the turf, and now fourth down early here in the second quarter. I don't know that the passes from Sims have that zip that we normally see, James. Well, it's, and, and they are not attacking anywhere in the middle of the field. They, they've been little swing passes to the backs. Here, here you see him dumping it off, trying to get it to Leonard. And, and leaning on the run game a little bit more even than they usually do, even though it's been successful with the two touchdowns. But you got to mix it up a little bit. Jacoby George, deep man, ranging around his 30-yard line. Gets out of the clutches of the first tackle, up to the 45-yard line of the turn. Jacoby George for Miami, outstanding field position at the 45-yard line. And here's exactly why Manny Diaz doesn't go for it on fourth down and two at his own 34. You go play some defense, punt it away, and you work on flipping that field. Now you've got a fresh set of downs sitting about midfield. 16-yard return by George. Puts the ball just beyond the 45-yard line. Miami in its first two drives. 151 yards and two TDs, the last three, 78 yards, couple of fumbles, and their first three and out on the previous drive. Van Dyke is going deep at the 15 and caught. That's Charleston Rambo, and he hangs on at the end of the play for Miami. Yeah, watch for the hurry up. There's an injured Georgia Tech player. This is when... Manny Diaz and Rhett Lashley li really love to go tempo, but unable to go here with the injured player. Here's one more look at it and showing you why. Tyler Van Dyke, 76% the last two weeks combined. Rambo has to double catch it a little bit, but pulls it in finally to secure it. And down knocking at the door right now, the Miami Hurricanes with an injured jacket on the field. We're all. Today's pros need today's tools, and nobody understands that better than the Home Depot. Our online project calculators cut guesswork and extra trips. Job site delivery frees you up to focus on the task at hand. And if you don't want to buy equipment, you can rent it. That's how today's pros get more done. New tech, new tools, old fashioned hard work. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles everywhere. But where can we use them? You can use them on any travel purchase, not just some travel purchases. Venture gets a gold star. <laughs> What's in your wallet? Five dollars for the best kind of wings paired with the best kind of celery sticks. Crinkle fries. Arby's, we have the meat. Get help.
detecting hazards in the dark. With available night vision in the Cadillac XT6. Hurricanes in the red zone. They're one for one today with an eight-yard TD toss to Mike Harley from Van Dyke. Jared Ivey was the injured Georgia Tech player. He was on the sidelines, was favoring his right leg. But up and moving around on that sideline with the Yellow Jackets. All tied at 14, 10.36 to go in the second quarter. First and goal, Canes. Knighton unable to turn that corner. Back to the line of scrimmage, Tariq Carpenter with the hit. Senior. He's been around this program a long time and officially a loss of one on the play by Carpenter. Yeah, where the youngsters from Miami at safety are very physical. The old guys for Georgia Tech at safety are, are pretty tough as well. And Tariq Carpenter's, he's banged up. He's on his knee wanting some medical attention. He did a really good job of stuffing that gap before the rooster. They're yeah, clutching the left hand as the training and medical staff attends to Tariq Carpenter. So we'll take a timeout when we come back. Second and goal. We'll check on the status of Carpenter. Targeting on yourself, perhaps. <laughs> he did. He does have that supportive brace on the left wrist, but they're taping up the fingers. Well, both Tariq Carpenter and Wanye Thomas have been banged up. You know, it's that time of year. It's November, after all, and it's college football. And it, it happens. It happened a little bit earlier for these Miami Hurricanes with all the injuries, and then they had the, their big resurgence with the the youth movement. Hopefully they'll get that taped up. But a good job by Carpenter to step up there. When you've got a guy like Jalen Knight and carrying the football, you don't want to take him on an open field five yards from the line of scrimmage. You want to step up and meet him with all the junk's going on, those big offensive linemen and defensive linemen, so he doesn't have a lot of wiggle room. There's a second down and goal now after the big drop by Tariq Carpenter. Number 14 in white, Jalen King, is in for the injured Tariq Carpenter. So second and goal from the 11. Van Dyke to the end zone into double coverage. And incomplete. His receiver was Xavier Restrepo. Wesley Walker back there. Wanye Thomas as well, number one. And that back corner of the end zone, double coverage. A little bit too tall for the 5'10 Restrepo. If anybody can find a way to pull it down, though, it's going to be number seven. That seven catches for 89 yards in that pit game. It seems like he's always going airborne, airborne to pull it down. Third and goal, though. Two for three on third down in the game for Miami. This third and goal for Tyler Van Dyke. Receiver broke the other way. Rambo went to his right, and the pass went left and into the back corner. Zamari Walton defending, but that football nowhere near the intended receiver, fourth down Miami. Yeah, two Canes there, not on the same page, obviously. And that really hasn't been the case, even though Tyler Van Dyke wasn't the starter. But remember, the Eric King missed all of spring practice. So Van Dyke got all of those reps. So he's, he's built really good relationships with guys like Charleston Rambo, Xavier Restrepo and company. But not on the same page there. And a stand by Georgia Tech to force a field goal try. 28-yard attempt, Borregales. Makes his 10th field goal of the season. He's now made five of his last six. Borregales adds three points. Miami takes the lead 17-14 after leading 14-0. In that first quarter, now 9.48 to go in our second quarter. 28-yarder and good, Borregales. Freshman from Miami. Older brother, Jose. Former Miami kicker and the Luke Rosa Award winner last year. The first Luke Rosa Award winner in school history. He also wore number 30, and Andy continues the tradition. So Andy's now 10 of 14. Jose went 20 of 22 last season as an All-American. Five-play drive yields three points. 
on the 28-yard field goal. How about that get up, James? That was nice. The president of the James Bates Fan Club. He also is here. Got, rid, got rid of the product placement in the picture. He, th <laughs> he took the water bottle out. Either that or to make the U. Well, it's 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 scenes like that that are what you expect when the Miami Hurricanes are rocking and rolling. Wow. That's when that's when the freaks come out and it gets loud in here and it's love them or hate them. The Hurricanes. It's good for college football when they're in the gossip. Halloween was last week. Still celebrating. That's Gibbs into the pile. Just beyond the 25-yard line. So Georgia Tech with the football and its offensive coordinator, Dave Patno. Well-traveled, as they like to say, James. Yeah, absolutely. Came to town from Temple up there. there of course, was where Jeff Collins was the head coach after his stay as a defensive coordinator at the University of Florida. And the Minister of Defense brought the offensive play caller down with him. Always enjoy visiting with him, and he's done a really good job with this offense, and he's got some some good tools to work with. Jeff Sims looking to maybe throw it around the house a little bit more here today. Sims with a rush. Pat Node was also an assistant at Holy Cross, Fordham, Springfield College, and the Coast Guard Academy. 30th year in coaching for Pat Node. You know where Holy Cross is, James, don't you? Up there. Way up there. <laughs> up there and to the right a little bit. That's right? in Worcester, Massachusetts. Ah. In the Patriot League. Second and eight for Pat Node, Sims, and the Jackets. We're in Miami Gardens, Florida. Temps in the low 70s. Light breezes and a light game, maybe two yards. Well, we'll watch Wayman Steed. Wayman Steed, you talk about filling the gap. Man, he brought a load too. That was a nice lick to just stone the back and force a third down and six. Hello, Wayman on that defensive play by Steed, number 17 in green. Third down for Georgia Tech, three of seven on third down of the game. This is third and six. From its own 30 for the Yellow Jackets. Sims incomplete. Closest receiver was McGowan, but his route was longer than the pass thrown by Sims to Corey Couch back there for Miami. So Sims just a click off today, James. Well, and, and I, I'm not so sure it wasn't intended for Malachi Carter. Hitching up down underneath and that ball thrown too high for him. So either way, you've either got two guys not on the same page or just a ball thrown off the mark. Either way, the Canes stand one more time on third down and force a fourth down and six. Jacoby George, very high punt from Shanahan. Fair catch attempted and made at the 25-yard line for George. Made it look easy, but that one up into the heavens. 45 yards on the punt from Shanahan for Georgia Tech. 17-14 Miami got a 28-yard field goal from Andy Borregales on their most recent possession. And again, Miami trying to stay in the race in the Coastal. Around the league, Boston College started with a win yesterday. The Red Bandana game, Wells Crowther, a hero of 9-11, 17-3. We'll keep an eye on those scores as the day progresses. That ball came out at the end as well by Knighton. Georgia Tech has the football. It's Keenan Johnson. 14, Jalen King took it to the end zone. What a wild play. Knighton was running with the football and it popped out. Jalen King says thank you very much and goes the distance. Ball in the outside arm there of the rooster, but the defender just does a great job putting that hat right on the ball. And how about the hop right into the hands of Jalen King to the house. Offense having a little bit of trouble moving the football. 
will help out. On the field with a touchdown, previous play, is under further review. So there is a review. I want to check over there, see if maybe he stepped out. Nice hustle play to try to knock him out. Hey, DJ Scaife. That could be close, just inside the five. Still there's some green in between the foot oh, wow. there. The ruling on the field was touchdown on the fumble recovery and return of 40 yards by Jalen King. Gary Patterson taking a look. Official review. Let's see if we can give credit to who forced that fumble. That, that other angle, you see there's a, a little bit of, here you go, this is, this is the better look at it. There, see right there, that's the foot. And it sure looks like there's a few blades of green in between and tiptoeing, tight roping and finding the end zone. Jalen King has been solid at that safety spot. Seven tackles against Duke, seven tackles against the Cavaliers a couple After weeks ago. Review, the ruling on the field stands, touchdown. So that is the second fumble return for a touchdown this season. Jordan Dominic had one against Kennesaw State of 70 yards on a fumble return for a touchdown. And this one for Jalen King, 40 yards on the return. The Georgia Tech now with 14 points off turnovers. Third fumble by Miami. So the Yellow Jackets have taken the lead for the first time today. 21-17. And remember, Tom, coming in, it had been two complete games. Where the Minister of Defense, Jeff Collins, the defensive-minded head coach, as he'll trot out there to take a look at one of his injured players that a lot of those offensive linemen banged up this year. But they pride themselves, Andrew Thacker, in, in creating turnovers, chaos plays, as they call them. And, but they hadn't had a turnover in eight quarters, three in the first half here today. And this one taken all the way back to the house. Jalen King housing it. Michael May, 61, is the Georgia Tech player being helped to his feet. That was on the extra point try after the return by Jalen King, the sophomore from Laverne, Tennessee. 40 yards on that fumble return. Wanye Thomas, the player who jarred it loose. Yinde Ely was also in the vicinity, and Knighton was the player who fumbled. So Miami now, a third fumble in this game, and they've lost them all. 14 points off of those Miami fumbles. And the second time this season that Georgia Tech has returned a fumble for a touchdown. Turnovers on three of their last five drives for Coach Diaz and the Canes. So Georgia Tech is forged in front. After it was 14-0 in the first quarter, James, would you think we'd have 21-17 with just under eight minutes to go in the second quarter? No, I, I would have lost a little bit of money at the Hard Rock Casino. <laughs> but I've been there instead of here. That's for sure. Always split your aces and eights. But that's a whole nother show. Smith and Restrepo, they're deep. And Restrepo will not gamble and come out of the end zone. So here comes Miami again, just told you. Turned it over on three of their last five possessions. And a couple of times, they fumbled late on pass receptions. And Knighton had that last fumble. Get the freshman right back out there, give him the football, right, James? Absolutely. He, he's too good. You can't let him hang his hat. Him going behind that offensive line. Get back into that rhythm. The rhythm that really the last couple games and early in this game was, was really fun to watch. Even though they 
Struggled a little bit there in the second half of that pick game. Able to hang on. Here goes. Give it right to number four for his 10th carry of the football game. He's up to 58 yards rushing. T.K. Chemenza, he's into the game. He took over for Jared Ivey, number 15, who was injured there. Chemenza, number five in tech gold, blue and white. Second and eight, Miami. Two hundred and one yards passing in this first half for Van Dyke. A couple of TD passes. Through the progression, lost it down the sideline, and that one was nearly intercepted. Smith was the receiver, but Swilling had a much better chance to make the play on the ball. Tom, you've had to listen to me ad nauseum talk about playing these, these corners, playing man coverage just like this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You're stride for stride. You're in good, good position. So trust your technique. Trust your, your training. Those eyes get big on that receiver. Snap that head around. Trey Swilling does all of the above. Just can't complete it. And seal the deal on what could have been the fourth interceptor, or the fourth turnover, rather, in this first half. Van Dyke lucky to get this one back for a third down and eight truck. Has the time. Over the middle, beyond the 45-yard line, Will Mallory. Full extension, and he comes up with the grab. First down, Miami, up to the 47. 20 yards on the play. Well, Will Mallory, he knows he's going to get hit. Extends his body, secures it. He goes up top like Patrick Young, former Florida Gator NBI, a guy who played at Providence School up in Jacksonville where he went to high school. Will Mallory, the junior from Jacksonville with a huge pickup on third down. Second catch for Mallory. Player down is Keon White, number six for Georgia Tech. Mallory, as they attend to White, was part of that trick play in the first quarter against Pittsburgh. 57 yards. Good to see White up and moving. Yeah, the, the Pitt special or the Philly special that they ran to Mallory hey, yeah. last week. Pretty little play. And there's Keon White, who Jeff Collins has been talking him up for so long. And there's why. I mean, that's a big dude right there wearing that number six. And he's been trying to get him on the field, but he's been injured. The transfer from Old Dominion. Junior from Decula, Georgia. Canes needed that big play. Nice throw and a nice catch. Knighton. Up to midfield and three yards. Quez Jackson on the stop. Jalen Knighton, the freshman. Deerfield Beach High School, Lauderdale, Florida. Couple of rushing TDs in that win at then number 17 Pitt. Shifty moves near the 45. Ely on the tackle, five yards, Knighton. 622 and rolling on the clock. Nice job there by Zion Nelson, the left tackle. They're down and short, though. Knight and blasts his way to the 40-yard line. Pad popping action. Wanye Thomas makes a stop. Six yards on the run. Knight and, and that'll breeze the chains and move him for the U. It's a good way to put it, Tom. It blasts his way. <laughs> he makes up his mind. He's going north and south. I mean, there is truly a blast of energy from number four. Going with the Wake Forest slow mesh to Knight and this time. By the way, Wake Forest is undefeated and playing at North Carolina today. That is not a conference game, by the way, as you saw on that scoreboard we showed you. Yeah, you have a feeling it was a close one there in the first half. You have a feeling it's going to be a little bit more at 59-53 shootout. But the Tar Heels won last year. They were down 21 points in that third quarter, able to come charging back. and. Miami jumping off sides when they start start to click a little bit. Ball start, number 62, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. 
Momentum killer, 62, I love my mama very much, and now you know that. It's, you know, you got things going, you got them on their heels, got them on their heels, and then it doesn't seem like a whole heck of a lot, but little little penalties like that can, can really kill the momentum of a drive. See how they respond here on a second down and 12 now. Five minutes to go in the quarter. Van Dyke with a play fake. Has his receiver. That's Rambo. Near the 25-yard line. Tobias Oliver on the stop. Rambo cuts across the middle of the field. Yeah, nice throw. And again, he knows he's going to get some contact. But with a name like Rambo, you got to be tough across the middle, right? 17 yards on the previous play. Cody Brown into the mix. Freshman from Lilburn, Georgia. A yard for Brown. It's been mostly night and there's some Cody Brown here this season after the loss to Harris against North Carolina. Out for the season. Eric King went down against Michigan State, so it's been up to the youngsters. Van Dyke, Knighton. Cody Brown getting involved right there. But Knighton back in the backfield with him right now. Cameron Harris, knee injury against North Carolina. It was a miscommunication. Rambo looked back and the ball was sailing over his head. Zamari Walton had coverage Georgia Tech. Seen that a couple of times here in the first half. One of them was in the end zone where Rambo went right, the ball went left. And then Borregales came out here to 28-yard field goal. Well, Georgia Tech going to try to hold them right here, force another field goal try on a third down and nine now. Got to protect the middle of that field. 14-yard line where the Canes are trying to get. Nowhere they're trying to break those routes off at. 11th play of the drive. Four of six on third down. Van Dyke trying to extend the play and he throws it away. Closest receiver was Rambo. Sylvain Yonjuin, the pressure. Yonjuin, number 32, right up in there. Also Charlie Thomas. So now Borgallis back out there. He's one for one, 28 yarder. So this will be from 40 yards away. Four for four on field goals or 40 or more yards this season. Borregales right from 40. Hit the upright and missed. Wow. A late hooking action on that field goal. He's now four for five from 40 plus yards. Nice snap and hold, but there's that hook. And I hope he's not having some flashbacks to the Virginia game. Well, when you when you miss a field goal down in Miami, you, you got to think of the laces. If laces out, Dan, that's where it starts, and the, the laces were out. It's like Finkel. Or was it Einhorn? I think it was Einhorn. <laughs> the Virginia game was September 30th, James, and that was a 33-yarder that hit the upright. And a loss for Miami, 30 to 28. That was a chance to cut the lead to one. Gibbs on the rush. I have a feeling, though, we're going to see a lot more points in the second half. And Borregales will get another chance. No gain on the play. So he had made one from 28 yards in this quarter. Crazy how you, you mentioned it earlier, how that momentum can change, Tom. I mean, it was all green and orange. I mean, it 100% and then flip that switch. It's what a few turnovers can do to you. And especially when you run one back on defense, change things around. There's a second and long. Sims runs out of the pocket and into trouble at the 23-yard line. Back to the line of scrimmage. Coming up at halftime, it's driven with Manny Diaz. Learn more about the third-year head coach for the Canes. First half highlights and stats as well. 21-17, Georgia Tech has the lead with 245 and rolling. Miami's won two in a row. 
Georgia Tech has lost two, two in a row. And the Canes trying to keep their hopes of a coastal division title alive. Sims just needs to protect this football here. Don't give Miami the short field with two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Take care of that football first things first. Sims, plenty of time, just drops it off to Mason. Mason up near the 40-yard line. He's got plenty for the first down. Up to the 42-yard line, and that's a 19-yard play on third down to Jordan Mason. Remember, he's got the 71-yard TD run, James, in the first quarter. Well, and this is a huge play. Nice play call by Pat Note. Put it in the hands of 27, let everything else clear out. The Canes only rushed three, so it was plenty of time for that to develop and him to come across the field and then doing the damage after the catch. And his first catch of the game, Sims just barely got it away. He was being dragged down. Jared Harrison Hunt. Kind of a funny looking play from the very beginning. Number 80 in the area, incomplete pass. Second down. Watch Smith come flying through. Harrison Hunt almost had the sack, and Sims doing a good job of just getting rid of it. Not only getting rid of it, but getting rid of it in the vicinity of a receiver. So he doesn't draw the intentional grounding penalty. Dylan Leonard was over in that area, so you live to play another down with second down and 10 as the clock stops at 148 left in the hand. We know Sims a little bit banged up this season, fighting through it, 9 of 17, 62 yards through the air. This pass out near the Miami bench is a short hop to Kyrick McGowan. Senior from Dalton, Georgia, can't make the play. There is a player down. That's Jared Harrison Hunt. Favoring the right leg. Those are big legs, aren't they? Those aren't calves, those are cows. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a tough guy to move if you're an offensive lineman. 6'4, 285 pounds. There he is on the left. Yeah, he was the one that almost had the sack on the play before. Haven't seen. McLeod is back out there. Zach McLeod, remember, left the game earlier. So let's see if Zach McLeod, that defensive end, and his rush mates all walked up trying to make some noise. Can get a big stop on third down. Plenty of time to go score some points on offense if they can get the ball back. Sims, open man at the 45. Sanders, and Sanders to the 48. That's first down. 11 yards of Donica Sanders from Sims. What an effort play. Dumps it off to Sanders, and he's got a lot of work to do. DJ Ivy. These Kane defenders are so good in open field. Ivy doesn't quite come under control enough to drop him, and Sanders falling backwards into the first down. Fourth catch for Sanders. Sims is going nowhere. Tyreek Stevenson flexing for the sophomore from Miami. That'll be a loss of four. And the ball back to the Georgia Tech side of the 50 at their 48. Two timeouts for the Yellow Jackets, 45 seconds to go in our second quarter. A little bit behind the receiver at the 45, and the ball is rolling around on the turf. Kyrick McGowan, defended by Cam Kitchens. So now third and 14, 35 seconds on the clock. Georgia Tech 5 of 10 in the game, on third down. Not a strength. No. Of the Jackets coming in. They were last of the conference, James, at 35% on third down. It's 
Smith tackled there midfield. Oh, careful. So there, you, you, you get that equipment, you can't throw it. That's Stevenson, James, rolling around. Man, a lot of these big time players from Miami banged up. They can't afford to lose Stevenson. But that, uh, the, the throwing of the towel after the stop is a little bit worried. It reminded me of the, the LS shoe play when the Florida Gator last year threw the shoe and got a delay of game penalty. Look at the big man. Jay Silvera move, man, that's pretty good for a 306 pounder. So Stevenson's banged up and, and choosing to run the football here, Georgia Tech, to force Miami to use a timeout. We have all three remaining. With the injury, the clock will stop at 26. Miami, Miami has elected not to use a timeout to avoid the 10 second runoff. Please, please reset the game clock to 16 seconds and the clock will start on my signal. Correction, Miami has selected to use a timeout to avoid the 10 second runoff. Please put 26 seconds back on the clock. Thank you. Looking at okay. Tyreek Stevenson, <laughs> he's really favoring that right shoulder and looks already like it's, it's taped up quite a bit. So hopefully he's okay. These guys got to finish strong in this one, and then they've got the Seminoles up in Tallahassee next week. They'll take him to the locker room early, and after we got that cleared up, so rather than 16, we've got 26. At the very least, you force them to punt. A lot can happen when you force a team to punt that football. Let's see if they come after it here. You mentioned the Canes at Florida State next week, James. Miami's won four in a row in that series, and that is the next destination. This is a tumbler. Checks up at the 23. Smart. Let that referee blow the whistle. And, you know, you're covering those punts. Act like you're waiting for it to move a little bit. Get two more ticks off the clock rather than putting a hand on it right away and stopping it at 18. So two timeouts left, but only 16 seconds remaining for Tyler Van Dyke in his offense. 14 to nothing before that explosive play that Manny Diaz spoke of and 71 yards muy explosive from J.P. Mason not only it was really the, the first nice jolt that the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets had they feel like they had a little bit of momentum a little bit of energy and capitalize on it Restrepo the deep man he watches it sail over his head So Van Dyke now with nine TD passes in the last two and a half games. 238 yards so far in the first half. And those were completed passes at the tail end of those plays in the first half. Two of the fumbles that gave the ball back to Georgia Tech with 14 points off of Miami turnovers. See if the Canes have addressed ball security in this second half. From the 25, in their first drive. Scored on their first two drives to open the game. They'll go tricker razzle with an open man, Rambo. He's got it behind that secondary. And Rambo lost the football at the end of the play again. Who's got the football? Damari Walton tried to chop it out of there. There's also a player down for Georgia Tech, and that's Swilling. Ruling on the field is a catch, and the receiver was down prior to losing possession. First and ten. Well, that clears that up. Ball did come squirting loose. It's a 60-yard play. Everybody with their ears pinned back. Hey, let's go make a big play on this first snap. And a nice play call, knowing just that, that they're going to be overly aggressive on defense. It was a very close one on the first fumble of the day. Let's see if this one's going to stay with Rambo. Zamari Walton coming with that haymaker. Mm, this one's going to be close as well. Remember, on the field, it was called 
the runner down. So Miami, but expect a whole lot more of that. When a team starts, it's like Sharks, you know, South Florida, that's a good fit. Sharks smelling blood in the water, but those turnovers, they become contagious and everybody's going after that football. So lucky to hold on to that one, try to punch it in the end zone. Miami in the CPI security red zone with a run by Knighton to the 10 yard line. Miami's two for two with a touchdown and a field goal in the red zone so far today. It's five yards on the night and run, gents. Tom and, and Georgia Tech doing a, a good job of keeping Miami in front of them at least and tightening up down here in the red zone to force some field goal tries. This is Knighton inside the five, driving his way to the two, just short of the goal line. Powerful run for the freshman at eight yards. Quez Jackson on the stop, short of the goal line. See how clearing the way, Ja'Kai Clark, who's been so big after the injury to Corey Gaynor. And Knighton will finish off the drive and take it into the end zone, basically untouched. Two yards and a touchdown. Jalen Knighton from Miami, back in front. So they got the big 60-yard play on the trick play from Van Dyke of the pass to Rambo. And they take it 75 yards in just over a minute. Andy Borregales. That's more like it. With those colorful shoes as well. Yeah, those are some South Beach shoes right there. The neon bright lights here in Miami. And here we go. Look at that right side of the line. Fantastic job. Jared Williams. Escape over there. I mean, just collapsing it down. Just dominating that defensive front. And nobody touching the rooster. Roosters are hard to catch as it is. <laughs> you know all about that, James. I do. El Guapo. Well, just what you wanted if you're a Kane fan. For these guys to come firing out of the halftime locker room, and that'll fire up the defense. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Knighton. He's the one who fumbled, and Jalen King took it in from 40 yards away. He started by flicking some fleas. Knighton. A little trick or razzle, James. Yes, sir. And, and you know, Tyler Van Dyke has been so money on those long throws, but one that is just way too easy like that, sometimes those tend to be the toughest ones to throw, making sure that it was a completion and under-throwing it a bit. Otherwise, nobody would have caught Rambo. And there you see the Yellowwood five-star drive summary. It happened in a hurry. A minute and a second. Knighton took it into the end zone. This is Ray on the return. Out of the shadows and into the sunshine here in Miami Gardens, Florida. North of the Coral Gables campus. Hard Rock Stadium. So glad that you're with us. We approach 3 o'clock on the Eastern Seaboard. Tom Wormy, James Bates. Wiley Ballard is on the sideline and our outstanding ACC college football production crew with you. And here's what the Jackets have done so far in this game, James. Here you see the two... Touchdown runs that third touchdown to make it 21 points was scored on defense by Jalen King. So a couple big plays. Other than that, they haven't been lighting it on fire, that's for sure. Sims in trouble. Got rid of it. McGowan. McGowan got popped at the 30. James Williams. That's a tough way to earn three yards for Kyrick McGowan. Cam Kitchens also combining and collaborating on the stop. Let's see it. Show it again. You know, Show like, you can again. hear it in the stadium. You oh. hear the big whoosh. Come on, truck. Come on, truck. I got to Hold on to it then. We'll we, get guys, it. we can't have a hit like that from the <laughs> freshman. I, I got to see it again. We'll get it for you, Bates. Efforting, as they say in the TV biz. Sims efforting a pass. And behind his receiver, Gibbs. Gibbs has one of those touchdown runs of 29 yards. Mason's TD run was 71 yards in the first quarter. And now it's third down for Georgia Tech. Opening yeah. moments, third quarter. You know, again, Miami fans, if you haven't seen much of this quarterback, Jeff Sims, here this year, 
This isn't the way he's played. He has been off the mark on more throws than not. Now they're making some noise on a big third down and seven with all the juice on the side of the Canes right now. Sims looking left all the way, making his break at the 40 incomplete as he hit Malachi Carter, beating Clark in the secondary. First down, Georgia Tech, 10 yards. Canes brought some bodies. There you see walked all the way up is the safety, James Williams. That's when you put Jordan Mason in there on a must-have third down situation to ha help with that pass protection. And Malachi Carter is breaking that route off. And Jeff Sims doing a good job of standing in there strong and hitting him to move those chains. What a big pickup. We've seen Sims have some big passing days. 359 yards through the air against Pitt in a home game in Atlanta. Also proved for 300 at Virginia. Mason on the carry, loss of one. The U has taken the lead here in the third quarter. 24-21 after trailing 21-17 at halftime. Four receivers set for Sims. That's McGowan at the bottom of your screen as we go inside of 12 minutes of the quarter. Gibbs was the running mate for Sims. Steed forced him out of bounds. Just a yard. Yeah, and it's, you know, as, as speedy and athletic as those two guys running the option right there are Jeff Sims and Jameer Gibbs. This is a defense so long and athletic. You're not going to beat them to the sideline that often. Do a nice job by Steed, force it out of bounds, and a third down and 10, one more try. Let's see if they can get to the quarterback this time. Six of 12 on third down of the ball game. Those edges will bend, Sims from a cluttered pocket, complete to Mason, trying to get to midfield. That's what he needed. That was the line to gain, and it appears he has enough. And he does. First down, Georgia Tech converting on third down for 10 yards. Wow. Dumps it off. And again, you need him to make somebody miss. James Williams, the safety. Great in open field. Comes down and he settles his feet and he makes the tackle. But it's the want to in J.P. Mason to just stretch forward just enough before Kitchens can come and clean it up to move those chains. A couple huge pickups on third down. And a nice hungry fight by 27. This is Gibbs to the 40, to the 30. Gibbs accelerating, steps out of a tackle, down the sideline, and into the end zone. An amazing play from Jameer Gibbs of 50 yards and a TD for the Yellow Jackets. Quite the one-two punch, it's Jordan Mason. They're on the run to move the chains and then swinging it out there, get the ball in the hands of Jameer Gibbs. They want to do it 20 times a game, at least doesn't step out of bounds. Excellent job of staying in. And it's good blocking on the perimeter by the other receivers out there. But whether it's catching the football or running it, they want the ball in number one's hands and showing you why right there as the Jackets retake the lead. Second receipt the yard play. It's a pass play from Sims to Gibbs down the sideline. And so Georgia Tech had the halftime lead. Miami took it back with a touchdown. Knighton in from short yardage. And now Georgia Tech sees the lead. Seven plays, 73 yards. Three and a half minutes. 50 yards down the sideline for Gibbs. And that is his second receiving touchdown of the season. 12 TD toss for Jeff Sims. So... Yes, James, maybe Sims was out of rhythm, but they're putting him in high percentage situations in the second half and letting his teammates do the rest. You're absolutely right, and a good guy to get the ball in the hands of in Jameer Gibbs, but let's not forget the play, the effort by Jordan Mason, the play before, to convert and move those chains on third down. The Jackets go two of two on third down on that drive, and they're now seven of 13 for the game. They've also got 14 points off of Miami turnovers. 
So Van Dyke closing in on 300 yards passing. And Rambo closing in on 200 yards receiving. Charleston Rambo has a touchdown grab of 35 yards. Had a 60 yard catch from Van Dyke on the previous drive to set up the Knighton TD from short yardage. That's Mike Harley who continues to climb the ranks in all time receptions here at Miami. He got six yards. Harley has a TD catch of eight yards in the first quarter. Nice job there by Will Mallory, the tight end outside blocking to help clear the way. Knighton. That should be first down yardage past the 30 yard line for Knighton and five. Two yard TD run for Knighton on the previous drive. Fifth rushing touchdown for offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley. Van Dyke now over 300 yards passing in this game. Wants to add to that total. Bye in a little time. Forced out by Wesley Walker. Nice coverage by the Georgia Tech secondary. In, in, while Van Dyke didn't get that corner turned and make something crazy happen with his legs, he, he's the big body type like Garrett Schaefer up at Syracuse, but he's not the, the sprinter, the big strider like Tr uh, Trader is. But you see right there, he can run a little bit. It's not like he's not athletic. He can run when he needs to. I think North Carolina had a big run. Knight near the 45-yard line. to Reed Carpenter on the tackle, not before seven yards from the freshman Knight. Kennard in the vicinity as well. This has been an entertaining game from start to finish, although you see Knighton come off the field. He's clutching the left wrist, James. Yeah, and hopefully it's just a stinger. That, that left arm sometimes will go dead. And you're right, it does look like it's a little bit lower down on the hand. So Cody Brown back in the game. Knighton just took it over 100 yards rushing in the game. 102 on 19 carries, but Brown is in there. Right up the middle. And the pile forced back. They'll give him progress to the 45. They stand him up. Penetration. Was it Jamon Brooks? He got back there. They punted it away in a similar situation in the first half. Keeping the offense out on the field right now, though. But they're starting running back on the sideline. 7 of 12 on fourth down this season. Uh -uh. That was Brown. Hit at the 45-yard line. He needed the 46, and he did not get there. Jamin Brooks, zero for Georgia Tech. The hero. Well, the hero, the former walk-on for three years. He is paying his own way to Georgia Tech right in the middle. Look at him getting underneath and standing straight up to Kai Clark. And not only standing him up, but then getting rid of him, shucking the blocker and stoning the running back. So earlier in the game, Diaz goes for it and wisely flips the field on fourth and two. This time they roll the dice. And the Jackets come out on top. Domino, as they say down there in Little Havana, right? So the gamble does not pay off. And remember, Knighton had to come out of the game. He's over 100 yards rushing. Georgia Tech has the ball back. Sims drops it. And he's able to fall on it. Dangerous play. DeAndre Johnson all over Sims. It's going to be a big loss for the Jackets. Put the ball back at the 38 or so. Johnson's in his lap as soon as he drops back. And a Miami kid went to Miami Southridge before going originally to the University of Tennessee, but came back home. And Sims lucky to get that one back after the 17-yard loss. Here's Gibbs trying to get it back. He might do it and more. Has a lead blocker. And he gets wrestled to the turf by Avante Williams. But Gibbs had blockers. There is a player down behind the play for Georgia Tech. And so with 7.20 on the clock, we'll check on the injured Georgia Tech player, bring you an update when we return to Miami Gardens. Absolutely Wiley from Sandersville, Georgia, Washington County High School. It's turned out a lot of greats. 
to Keo Spikes. Great linebacker that played there before going to Auburn in the NFL. Big third down here on the field. Franklin coming in at center. It's Jordan Mason wrapped up by Jonathan Ford and two yards on third and a little more than five yards to go. So fourth and two. Now we just saw Miami go for it and get stopped by Jamin Brown. Jamin. It's a long Brooks. two here, though. It's more like three. It looked a little bit closer from Miami. Now they are in Miami territory. Too far to kick it. No man's land just about. Eight of 16 on fourth down this season. They've had success. This is Gibbs. He got popped. But did he have enough? He did. Smith hit him, but Gibbs on the reception got four yards enough to get the first. Smith in the middle of the field knows immediately what they're trying to do and reacts in a great open field tackle. But it, the, the throw has to be right now, and it has to be right on the money, and it is. A great job by Sims to pull that trigger and to beat Smith before he can get there. In the man coverage, outstanding play call once again by Pat Node. Some huge third down pickups on the last drive, and this time they take it all the way to fourth down, and they keep the drive alive. Fresh set of downs. Sims wants to throw it. He got hit. They tried to wrestle the ball away. That was Stevenson, number two. And so Miami picks up the sack and a loss of two after sacking Kenny Pickett four times in the win on the road last week at Pitt. I don't know how this ball doesn't end up on the turf. Watch this coming off the top rope. It looks like he might have lost it for a second. But unlike Miami in the first half, this ball that's been fumbled around by Georgia Tech in this half has bounced right back to him. A few lucky hops. And second down and 12 after the loss of two on the, the blitz off the edge by Stevenson. Again, Miami drives the ball carrier back. Jordan Mason, Leonard Taylor, number 56. Loss of three. Boy, this crowd making some noise right now. They like it when their Hurricanes look like bullies out there on the field, don't they? Plays like this, as long as they don't draw the flag. Give them what they want. Give them what they ask for. Third down and 15 now, Hurricanes. You got to stone them. Get off the field. Play clock down to one. They don't get it off. You saw the... New center, Franklin. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. I mean, either way, it's going to be third and long. But back it up five more yards. And Weston Franklin, who's in for Mikey Minahan at center, looking back all the way to Sims. Hey, where are they doing the damage? Miami. Keep them in front of you, but know that all these passes, then these swing passes to the backs on the outside. Jordan Mason's in the game right now, probably for pass protection. Look for Georgia Tech to try to chop this in half a little bit, maybe get into field goal range. Sims pass complete, Carter broke a tackle. The tackling has been an issue for the Canes this season, getting better in recent games, but that's 10 yards as Carter was certainly able to break a tackle there. Yeah, you're right, and it's, but the thing is, is just got to wrap up and bring them to the ground here in this situation. Very tough in open field, but at least you're slowing them down there. DJ Ivy, this is, you're, it's a team that's gotten a lot better in recent weeks at tackling. So Brent Samagli is out there for the field goal attempt. It's going to be 51 yards on the attempt for Samaglia. 10 of 13 on the season. It's on the way from 51, and it's no good. As long this season had been 37 yards, that against Virginia Tech at home. So they went for the 51-yard attempt. 
He has attempted a 60-yarder this season, James, but that was also a miss against Northern Illinois in the first game of the season. So some Maglia misses from 51 yards away here in the third. Jackets made it interesting, but good job by the Hurricane defense to get off of that field with no points on the board. Trailing by four. Tyler Van Dyke and company back out there. So officially they're calling it a 50-yarder, miss either way. And so Georgia Tech unable to come up with points. After they had their best field position, they were starting that drive at the 45-yard line of Miami. Had a couple of big negative plays, though, and the Canes have the ball back with Van Dyke. Little play fake. Over the middle, diving grab. And complete Restrepo. Make sure you stay with us after the third quarter for the fourth, presented by CPI Security from Miami Gardens and Hard Rock Stadium. Nine yards on the previous play, Restrepo. Little hurry up over the ball now for Rhett Lashley's offense. Nimble play from Van Dyke, who faked out the first attacker. Sims forced him out. That play before, I believe the first catch of the day for Restrepo, and only fitting that it's a diving catch. <laughs> it seems like nine times out of ten, he's laying out to catch that football. Excellent hands. Two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Georgia Tech up 28-24. Van Dyke in trouble. And he slides down as Wanye Thomas came up to meet him. No gain. Ball at the 43 yard line. Quez Jackson in pursuit as well. Tom, it's good to see Jalen Knighton back out there. It looked like he was in a lot of pain earlier. He went to the sidelines taking care of his wrist. Still seems to be. Holding it kind of gingerly, but he is back out there. Good news for the Canes. Smith. Down the sideline, tackled by Trey Swilling. It's an eight-yard play. And now third down with the ball right at midfield. Maybe an opportunity for a hard play-action pass. See if you can get him biting on a third down and short. Maybe expecting run there in the middle and dump one behind. Third and three for Van Dyke. Freelancing, trying to run forward. He saw the marker all the way, and he gets it as he goes out of bounds. White forced him out, not before Tyler Van Dyke runs for the first down for Miami. But you see what I mean, Tommy? It's enough athleticism. Just because he's not a running quarterback doesn't mean He's not a great athlete. Wiley mentioned earlier, he's a golfer, great baseball player in high school, talking with Rhett Lashley about it yesterday. He can run enough to hurt you in situations like that. Good pickup. He got eight on the previous play. Knighton sheds a tackler. That was Thomas hanging all over him. Then he goes out of bounds, thanks to Trey Swilling. Putting together these long drives. It, it's been something Miami's done a really good job of, these, these 70 yard plus drives over the last few weeks. But as you chip away defensively, if you're keeping them in front, you know, the, the more plays are out there, the more opportunity for a mistake to happen, for a big penalty to happen, or for a, a fumble, a turnover. We've seen plenty of those here today. You just got to keep them in front of you and can't give up the great big plays. Thad Franklin gets his chance, 22 in green three yards. James mentioned those miscues, three fumbles in the first half resulting in 14 Georgia Tech points. In fact, Miami had only fumbled nine times all season, but three today. And of those nine, they'd only lost three. So the turnover is a big story in this game. Two TD passes for Tyler Van Dyke. Freshman quarterback making his sixth start of the season and will head to the fourth with Miami driving but trailing. So coming up next, it's the fourth from Miami Gardens. Georgia Tech will take the lead into the third, 28 to 24. One and a fourth, we're ready to roll. Georgia Tech has a 28-24 lead. 
Miami has the football with Knighton inside the 30. Breaks it outside and breaks a couple of tackles and finally shoved out of bounds. Wanye Thomas impeding his progress. Excellent Knighton. job. Sorry, Tom, not only blocking up front by that offensive line, but outside Keyshawn Smith had the big week through the air last week against Pitt and the big win over there doing an excellent job on swelling to help make that a bigger play than it was going to be. Down to the 16 now for Miami. Maybe a yard for Knighton. Quez Jackson on the stop. Quez Jackson, I got confirmation finally that Quez is named after Jacquez Green, who's also from Peach County High School there in Georgia. Got that from Wiley Ballard, who talked to him this week. Former teammate of mine at the University of Florida, Quezzy. Quezzy could go. Seven tackles for the Quez in our game. After that last play against Knighton. Van Dyke wants to go to the air. Stepping out of bounds at about the 14 was Restrepo. A couple of yards on the play, and now third down for Red Lashley and the Canes. With that ball just inside the 15, 6 of 10 on third down in this game. Van Dyke rolls the pocket to the right. Throws it into the end zone of the diving attempt at incomplete. Charleston Rambo, all out effort, comes up empty. Walker in coverage for Georgia Tech. Well, Van Dyke rolling. Felt the pressure coming and had to release it just a little bit too hard. If anybody's going to get to it, though, it's number 11. Nice effort. They had a transfer from Oklahoma. And the Jackets force a field goal try. 31-yard attempt. Borregalis, one for two in the game. Connected from 28, missed from 40. And he rips that one right on through. And James Bates, after the field goal from Borg, stopped the road, Miami Gardens, the Canes, after the second made field goal of the game from Andy Borregalis. 31 yards away, closing the gap to just one. The lead has gone back and forth. Georgia Tech had the halftime lead, but the U closing in. It's a diving attempt by Rambo in the end zone on the pass by Van Dyke, just beyond his reach. And then the field goal from Borgellis. This has been a fun atmosphere here in Miami today, that's for sure. It has a lot to do. Winning is fun. And Jeff Collins team trying to get back to the winning ways hanging on right now but after two straight losses on the other side of the field for the hometown crowd and the hometown team two big back to back wins for the Hurricanes over top 25 teams as an unranked team they've never done it in back to back weeks beating top 25 teams and got those Florida State Seminoles a big rival up in Tallahassee next week first things first though got a lot of fourth quarter left this is Gibbs from the goal line Gibbs making Hurricanes miss. Flag comes out. The return goes up near the 40. There's at least two penalty markers on the field. Gibbs took that return from the goal line. Lost his hat again. Well, it was thrown from two different officials. During the return, personal foul. Illegal blindside block. Number 29, return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down, Georgia Tech. Uh, point of emphasis the last few years the blind side blocks you, you get in that situation all you got to do is put your body in front of theirs and just screen them off don't try to ear hole somebody and knock them out back in the day that you know we used to live for that sit in the film room and all laugh but it's you know we're a little bit smarter here in 2021 bruce jordan swilling guilty of the infraction that'll move the ball all the way back to about the 12 yard line that's right here at the 25-yard line. Eleven green. And, and there it is. You know, I mean, just again, all you got to do is just stand in front. And there's no way he's going to make that play. So instead of starting near midfield, you're starting near your own goal line. Extremely costly. The penalty right there.
Jordan Mason, maybe one. 71 yard TD run, the longest of his career back in the first quarter. Mason, the hero for Georgia Tech. Back in October of 2019, the last time the teams met, that went to overtime here in Miami Gardens, 28-21. He had the winning points. Short TD run. Speaking of short, that pass never got to Nate McCollum. Gotta have it. Jeff Sims feel like a parrot up here. A oh, little off the mark, a little off the mark, but that, that's what it's been. Anything there over the middle, he's, he's struggled with to hit his targets here today. That should have been a first down, and then they need it in a big way. They're backed up near their own end zone, now forcing a third down and 10. They're really going to be making some noise here on the hard rock. Two for five this half on third down. And just about 50% for the game for Georgia Tech. They've been good in this situation. How about this time? The answer is no. Short hop to McCollum. And so the personal foul had Georgia Tech starting at their own 12, and they're not going to advance the football, James. It's a crusher. Pressure from a linebacker and a safety as they mix it up a little bit. And just trying to sling it out there and get rid of it is Jeff Sims. But again, it falls to the turf. And so what would have at the very least been had it been a third and out near midfield was a flipping of the field. Instead, Miami's going to get this one. Oh, trouble. Uh -oh. Trouble on the punch. Shanahan got away. He had to get away from a Miami player who was all over him. Wow. It was Restrepo. Almost had a chance to tackle the punter. Wow. Watch Shanahan, the presence of mind. This kick is going to be blocked, and he knew it. Pulls it out and still able to get it off. Shanahan, the freshman punter from Castle Island, Ireland. That's nifty. That is as nifty for, for a guy. Football's new to him. I mean, that's fantastic, that play, to put him up at midfield at least. Knighton across midfield. Ely on the tackle. Knighton in the game over 100 yards rushing for the first time this season for the freshman. He got three. Has had some big games this season. 80 yards a week ago in the win at then number 17 pit for night. Also had three rushing TDs in the game at North Carolina. Lost 45-42 October 16th. They give him the ball. Knighton cut down by Carpenter. Moving the chains. Can't say enough about the job the big 62 Jared Williams has done. And then here comes flying in Charleston Rambo. You got to be careful and stay up above the waist, which he did. But going low, you can't come in and cut somebody from outside that tackle box. Knighton got nine, James. He's up to 137 yards on 24 carries. First down from the 39, Miami. Van Dyke looking the way of Rambo the whole time. Off the hands, Carpenter defensively. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Trying to go stride for stride with Rambo, who, oh, by the way, has the ball waiting on him when he breaks down that route and turns around. He's got to hang on to it. He's too good of a receiver, too good of a playmaker to drop that football as Canes are trailing by one. And we've had a very physical football game here today. Another player down. I won. Let's take a second here and get a message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro. Powerful tools for any project with gas like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. So while Ivy gets some attention on the sideline, we can tell you that our game has had three lead changes. Georgia Tech with a halftime lead of 21 17. 
Elsewhere in the ACC, a non-conference game in Chapel Hill. Wake Forest, number nine in the college football playoff standings. Number 10 of the polls. All tied up at 48. Wow. Wake had a 14-point lead in the second half. It's gone. Well, last year, North Carolina trailed by 21 in the third quarter and came back to win it 59-53. Pitt leading in Durham, and that's in the fourth. It appears that they're on their way to victory. They're at the top of the Coastal Division standings. Miami trying to stay within striking distance. They need this victory to do so. Broken tackle. Harley, 15-yard line. Big play from Mike Harley, the senior. Swilling on the tackle. James, that one went for 24 yards to Mike Harley, who has a touchdown catch in the game. Yeah, and these jacket defenders have done a good job coming in these vice angles and keeping the ball in front of them, but not here. Harley making them pay and taking it down inside the 20. Fourth catch of the game for Harley. There is a Georgia Tech player down. It's Carpenter. Remember, he went down clutching that same left hand. The COVID back out there after... Missing a lot of time for Boston College. And they shut down Virginia Tech in a way that Georgia Tech couldn't last week. Georgia Tech tried to come from behind that entire game, and they came from behind early in this one. Now they're just trying to hang on. Ball at the 15 for Miami. Inside the five and caught Smith. Fighting his way to the end zone and in. Keyshawn Smith from Tyler Van Dyke at 15 yards. Just another young and making big plays. Keyshawn Smith, the freshman, refusing to go down, puts the hand down on the turf, and ends up in the end zone. They'll keep that offense out there. Rolling on the field with a touchdown. Previous play is under further review. We want to take a look at it, and we'll give Van Dyke and Lashley a chance to talk over this play call on the two-point conversion, and that is absolutely a touchdown. Won't take too long. But how about the effort? Both sides of the ball, there have been incredible, gutsy effort plays by both of these teams. And sitting up here watching it, I've enjoyed watching both of these teams compete. And that's one thing, it, it hasn't been a perfect season for either of these squads. High expectations early for Miami, even with that very difficult schedule. A Michigan State team, an Alabama team to start off. Georgia Tech, a hard one as well, but both of these squads have continued to fight in every game they've played. And it's made for some fun football, that's for sure. The ruling has been confirmed, James, according to Gary Patterson. 15 yards of the pass play, third TD toss of the game for Tyler Van Dyke. Keyshawn Smith fighting his way into the end zone for the TD from 15 yards away. And for Smith, his second receiving TD of the season. Five-play scoring drive, they're going for two. Van Dyke looking right and into the end zone, and it's intercepted. Wanye Thomas. He's got a chance to run this one back. Knighton thought he had the angle. Restrepo had a diving chance at a tackle. This is Thomas. Does he have enough gas to get to the end zone? And Thomas takes it back. He intercepted it at the goal line at the other end, went all the way back. So Miami was going for two. It turns out Georgia Tech might get two, and it does look like Wanye Thomas made it all the way, although he is still down. No flags on the field. What a wild play. We'll review when we come back. We're all moving. 
Hey, Cover Girls, coming to you fresh baked. And that's that's the only thing that could come of it was to take it all the way. And he takes it to the house. He looked a couple times like he was going to be dropped. Watch the rooster, Jalen Knight, and right there looked like he had the angle, but then he just gets blown out of there by Zamari Walton. Kind of halfway going about it. Tyler Van Dyke is down there. Now you see Ja'Kai Clark there. Watch him at the bottom of your screen, right there at the middle of the field, the U right now. Look at the big center, 305 pounds, and look at the effort to get down there and to try to make the stop. He finally reaches up at the goal line, but it's two yards too late. I mean, that's the kind of grit that you want out of your football team, but it has to be across the board. And Jalen Knighton, they, if, if he fights a little bit more to just get in the way, just get in the way he had the proper angle, th then things are completely different. But what a hustle play by Wanye Thomas, who's been banged up here this season. The junior out of Niceville, Florida, over in the panhandle. Wow, we've seen it all. So they were looking for Mallory in the end zone. Thomas, the interception, took it all the way back. So Miami was attempting to go up by eight, James. And now the mathematics are incredibly interesting because Miami's kicking off. Georgia Tech is now trailing by three. And we told you about all the close games they played in. And so has Miami, for that matter. Ray. This game has had just about everything. Well, and oh, by the way, last time the Jackets came to town, we got some free football, or overtime action. So hang on. First, we got 10-21 left in regulation. From the 18 for Georgia Tech. And trailing 33-30. Just had our fourth lead change with the Miami touchdown. Mason turned back. Swallowed him up in a hurry. Penetration by Taylor. Everybody's sitting there waiting on Mason. And you don't see that very often. Dave Pat knows running back, Jordan Mason. Nine and a half times out of ten, he's going to at least make it back to the line of scrimmage. And usually positive yardage instead going backwards. Up the middle, short of the 25-yard line, Jameer Gibbs. Is sticking with it here. Here you see the, the big polar is doing a good job of getting up and going. Third and four. These third and mediums have not been easy here as of late, but they flipped it around in this game and have done a great job on third down. Can they move it here in a huge situation? Plenty of time for Sims. The pass is low and incomplete. Looking for McGowan. Would have had to have been a, a really good throw, but again, just a little bit short. Got to give those receivers a chance. Nice stand by Manny Diaz. Defense. Back is the D.C. here this season. Fifth three and out today for Georgia Tech. Remember what David Shanahan did on his last punting attempt. Restrepo was right in there and had a chance to block it, and Shanahan sidestepped him. This time they had the return on him. Of course, Miami did turn that into a touchdown. And then the subsequent return by Carpenter for two. The layup from 102 yards away. An amazing turn of events, and Miami has the lead. Time now for Sonovas. Greatness.
made here. Van Dyke, Rambo career day, and Knighton over 100 yards first time this season. Look at Van Dyke continue to pile up the numbers as well, James. Wow. Big time offensive weapons, and, and two of those guys are going to be around for a while. Charleston Rambo, the only upperclassman in that mix. It's been so big. Nice transfer in from OU. Van Dyke. Good velocity and zip on that pass to Rambo. Another grab. It's his seventh of the game. Jalen Huff makes a tackle. That's a first down Miami. Yeah, you can't expect, you know, even a, a Sam Madison and Pat Sertan, a couple great quarterbacks that played for the Dolphins right here on this field, to hang with anybody if you're not getting any pressure on the quarterback. Nobody back there, even close to Tyler Van Dyke, able to sit there and scan. And especially when you've got a guy like Charleston Rambo out there on the edge, trying to stay with him. So tough to do. Just up, keeps on adding to those numbers. Tom. Yeah, up to 210 yards receiving on seven catches for Charleston Rambo. Knight and sharp angle. Every time Georgia Tech appears to have Knighton fenced in, he finds a little bit of a crease, James, and at least falls forward for some bonus yardage. Yeah, first of all, he's, he's evasive. But then, I think what's most impressive is when he does decide to put that foot in the ground and go north and south, he's as bursty as we've seen all year. Second and six. Knighton has a hole right side and he stumbled. Might have stumbled just short of the line to gain as well. It was near the 27. He got five. Perhaps a yard short, James. Yeah, and upset with himself because he knows. With the ability that he has, he keeps his feet under him, and there's a chance he's taking that one down near the goal line. Mm, they stand him right up. I don't know, Tom. They only needed a yard, but it looked like they only got half a yard. Jamin Brooks taking the stop. They're going to measure it. How about Knighton for Rhett Lashley's offense? 27 carries, 146 yards. And a touchdown of two yards in the third quarter for Knight. They will measure. On first glance, though, it appeared that they were at least a football length short. And here come the chains, James, in 2021. Lasers. Change the lasers. I love the chains. Oh, I like them, but there are a lot of things. Oh, my goodness. That's well, according to the chain, yeah. Side. Maybe two footballs length. A laser could have told us that about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Just a thought. That's all. You, know you need the chains. I'm not saying you don't need them. You need them for visual oh, recognition. Yeah. But if you had a laser, like a laser pointer on there, boop. And if you wanted to build the drama that you get when you run those chains out onto the field, then have like a laser light show where the laser's like a rock concert, and then boom, Again, land it right there. The That's some drama. The suggestion box is right by the secret elevator behind our broadcast position. I'm going to fill it up. Just saying. Rambo over 200 yards receiving. You know, they've been stuffed right up the middle. Just just be alert. If you're not involved right there in the thick of it, be alert on a little play pass. On, on everybody just selling it hard. The handoff here to Knighton on a team that's already been stuffed on a fourth down and short. They need about a yard and a half. And you saw that Rambo is only 10 yards away from a school record. Can they get this fourth down play? That's Knighton. Nope. Oh, boy. The spot is not bad, James. I don't know. Saw the official running in from the far side. The spot looked to be favorable, but it might be still a little bit short. Where they're putting that ball down is awfully close. And there is a Georgia Tech player down. Miami had been over two on fourth downs. Here's the play to Knighton. They do a good job of getting underneath, but it's Quez Jackson coming off that edge. 
And Wanye Thomas filling from his safety spot. But the offensive line, they really won that battle, the initial pop. I was thinking it was, wasn't going to be the case. Now the Georgia Tech player down is Sylvain Yonjuin. As the chains come out for a second consecutive measurement. And they can't do it because Yonjuin is right on the hash marks. I've been calling college football games for about 30 years. And good to see Jan Juin up. And now he's out of the way and the chains can come in. That's a first. Player oh. down in the way of the chains. Almost had an official trip over the chains. Yeah. Wouldn't have tripped Again, over the laser. The spot looked good, but it's not enough, I don't think. Nope. It's not. Maybe half a football, three quarters of a football length. Georgia Tech makes the play on fourth down. So Knighton runs right into the line. It's a turnover on downs. Stop on fourth and short twice. Big time stand for Andrew Thacker's defense again on a fourth and short. So the team's last play, James, October of 2019. It was an overtime win for Georgia Tech, 28-21. The Jackets blocking a field goal at the end of regulation to force OT. Prior to that, they'd scored a touchdown on a pass with 58 seconds left. And then, who better than Mason to get it done in OT? It was the last meeting in 2019 and Georgia Tech has won four in a row in the series. Prior to that win at Hard Rock Stadium, the last win for Georgia Tech at Miami had been 2007 at the Orange Bowl, 17-14. Kicking it old school with the Orange Bowl. Second and six, Georgia Tech. Sims. I mean, it looked like the defender might have been a little bit early on McGowan. Play will stand. He was Jeff Collins. Begging for a flag, but he won't get one. You know, and, and again, these, these defenders, the Hurricane secondary, we saw it earlier on the interception. That's Kitchens on defense for Miami. Not enough to warrant a flag, evidently, although Jeff Collins was lobbying. Look at Quez Jackson, big stop there. Come on, Natalie's got to be proud back in Fort Valley, Georgia. Let's see if his offense can stay on the field, though. Here come the Canes. The pressure was there. A little toss to Gibbs. Up to the 45 and a first down. Oh, the presence of mind from Sims. Saw the pressure coming from James Williams and got rid of it for 14 yards. Just figure out a way to make it happen. Look at that. The little basketball shot like, like he's shooting a little five-foot jumper and just tossing it to Gibbs. And how about him making it happen? My a goodness. Another open man is Carter. It's a modest gain of five yards. Stevenson topples the receiver. Remember now, Smaglia missed that 50-yard field goal back in the third quarter. The difference right now. It's is... officially crunch time, James. Inside of five minutes to go in the fourth. It's been crunch time all game. Back and forth. Four lead changes with Georgia Tech ahead at halftime. This into the flat. Gibbs. Close to the 40, flag behind the play. Ivy on the tackle for Miami. We gotta sort out the penalty marker. If it stands, it's a nine yard play. But let's see. Holding, offense, number 80. 10 yard penalty, still second down. Call is on the tight end, Dylan Leonard. And while that one didn't go to the house for a touchdown, and Georgia Tech fans know there have been way too many touchdowns called back because of the penalty flag here this season for Georgia Tech. This one is, it, it must feel like a touchdown because that was a nice game and you had a defense for Miami on their heels and now instead it's second down and 15 as they back it up. Their 17th meeting is ACC opponents. Ball back to the 40. Kane's last win of the series came back in 2017. A game-winning field goal for Michael Batchley. Will it come down to a field goal today? McGowan.
Nice job defensively. React. Get back there before you can get those shoulders squared and make a move on you. Boy, Kenshin's, James Williams, Devontae Williams as well. Incredible group of freshman safeties. Eight of 18 on third down in this game for Georgia Tech. Low snap to Sims, fields it, nowhere to go, and that pocket will crumble. It's a hurricane in the Georgia Tech offensive backfield. Loss of seven. Just they bring a couple extra bodies and this time they finally get to him and guess who? Zach McLeod, the former linebacker, leading the charge. Banged up earlier, had to take him into the medical tent. That clock ticks down. Just five seconds left now on the play clock. Georgia Tech's won two in a row in the series, but trailing now inside of three minutes to go. That'll roll inside the 15 from Shanahan. So they'll spot it at the 13-yard line. There's a penalty marker. Oh. It's a substitution or a formation. It was thrown before the ball, I think, was even snapped. Teams have split the last six meetings. Manny Diaz team trying to snap a two-game losing streak in the series to Georgia Tech. Illegal substitution. Defense, more than 11 players on the field. That penalty declined. First down at the spot, end of the kick. Evidence that there was, in fact, a penalty <laughs> on the previous play. You don't believe us. On the punt by Shanahan. Well, needless to say, Sebastian's team needs to hang on to the football here with 247 remaining, whereas Andrew Thacker on the other side wants his guys to do some hunting. Game summary, James, brought to you by Ace Hardware. Fantastic game, back and forth, all kinds of drama. And look at the yards, 539 yards for these Hurricanes. Just 323 for Georgia Tech. But they've been crafty enough to find a way to stay in the mix, get some first downs, get some points. Can they get a stop? Van Dyke's pass is complete. That's Mallory fighting for extra yardage beyond the 20-yard line. He got nine. Georgia Tech will use their first time out. So two remaining. And what a nice pickup for Mallory. Mallory has done a fantastic job. Not just catching the football this year, but blocking down the field. I've really been impressed with the way they'll lead the charge on some of these screen passes on the outside. So Miami has all three of its timeouts. Again, Pitt with a win at Duke, top of the conference. And Miami needs this victory, try to keep pace. Virginia Tech with its loss yesterday would appear to be out of the race in the Coastal. Wake is trying to stay perfect. I don't think they are. I think we're going to have some a little bit of a shakeup. That game is late now, 58-48. North Carolina leads. And that would be the first loss of the season for Wake Forest. Van Dyke took some punishment. Knighton on the run. Van Dyke is slow to get up. He'll get some help, though, from Arroyo. Knighton got seven. Rooster needs to secure that football. Once you've got that first down, especially in getting to traffic, put two arms over that football. A couple extra yards does, doesn't matter in this situation, but, but protecting that rock certainly does. Is it all about the U today? They've got the ball, they've got the lead, and the clock is in their favor. The ball on the 29-yard line. 
for Van Dyke, 22 of 34. In that offensive scheme for Rhett Lashley, 389 yards and three touchdown passes. Run it again. Up the middle and room to scamper for Jalen Knight. Carpenter on the tackle. Jeff Collins wants a timeout. Going to have to take his second. Um, Jalen Knight is slow to get up there. He's favoring that wrist a little bit as Tyler Van Dyke puts his arm around him. This has been such a hard-fought battle between both of these games. There have been more injuries, I think, than we've seen in, in a long time in a football game. And hopefully everybody can heal up okay as they move on next week. Georgia Tech will host Boston College. Manny Diaz goes back to his alma mater, Florida State University, and takes his Hurricanes up there, hoping to take him up there riding a big three-game win streak. Jalen Knighton has 30 carries in the game. Season high, 160 yards as well. A touchdown run of two yards in the third quarter for Jalen Knighton. And number four gets the call again. Came up a little bit short of the line. Carpenter on the tackle. I mean... He's going to need an ice bath after this game. And maybe take it easy tomorrow. The key component, component would be if Miami can get the victory and hang in there as Georgia Tech has taken its last time out. Hang in there as far as the Coastal Division standings are concerned. And still have a shot at it. Boy, the way things can change during the course of a season. Miami with close losses against Virginia and North Carolina. And then they come back and defeat two ranked teams in a row in NC State and at Pitt. So that would give them the tiebreaker on Pitt should it come down to that in the crazy coastal. Absolutely. Other side of the coin, win number four is the hurdle <laughs> for Thacker, for Collins, for Georgia Tech. Yeah, it, well, and, and you know what, and, and that's that's that next step in, in making the program and, and turning it into the power they want to, finding ways to win. Got to get a stop here, though. Have to get a stop. Third and short, and they did it, James. They got in that backfield, and you see the celebration from Jackson, number four in white. Knighton had the carry. That should bring up fourth and short. And they're going to have to punt it away. You've been stopped twice on fourth and short. Good job by Quez Jackson. And there's Jeff Collins coaching him up. Andrew Thacker behind him. The offense is still out on the field as they'll let that clock tick down. Guessing just to give way to the punting unit. But you've got to force this Georgia Tech team to go the distance so they'll punt it away James we have seen Georgia Tech during our travels this season in this situation remember the game at Duke and they scored a late touchdown Adonica Sanders from Jeff Sims in the closing moments of that game and they got the win on the road it just went blow for blow and, and you know in that that Virginia game stands out they were they had no chance, it seemed, of, of winning that one. They came back in the second half, late in the second half, two onside kicks. Juke Kelly, who's five of five in onside kicks the last two seasons. So here you go. You've got time, but, but the problem is with Georgia Tech is they haven't been slinging this football all around the yard like Miami has here today. So it sure would be nice to get a good return to set them up so you don't have so far to go. It's like Trace Willing back there. Looking for a big old boomer from Lou Headley here. So Headley punts. Zende Ray, deep man at the 15. And 59 seconds to go. Headley gets it away. Ray. Stopped after a very short return. Devontae Williams in there on special teams. He's got an interception in this game as well. He donned the turnover chain. And this was the game at Duke. And this is Jeff Sims and Adonica Sanders. Now, they go 88 yards for the game-winning drive. Remember, Sanders also made a long catch prior to that to set that one up. 
Yeah. And then Carpenter there, or Thomas rather, with the interception. And that was another fun one. 51 seconds remaining when Adonicus Sanders pulled that one in in the end zone. But we haven't seen that deep pass over the middle. We haven't seen Jeff Sims with the ability to hit these receivers on the big hitters here in this one. Long way to go in a short time to get there. Sims. Open man inside that 40. Beyond the 40 and Sanders. We just talked about Adonica Sanders and his heroics against Duke. And he's the open man beyond the 40-yard line at 31 yards. My goodness, you get a ball that's going to hit the turf. A little bit low. Mikey Minahan, remember, is injured. And then to just let Adonica Sanders run free and to hit him right in that window in the zone. Look out. The review, I guess, maybe, maybe they're taking a look at Jeff Sims to see if he had his knee on the ground when he picked that football up. Uh-oh. Again, Weston Franklin. Knees that left down. knee is definitely he down. He had the ball. Wow. Bring it back. Wow. Yeah. Left knee hit the turf of Sims as he hit Sanders. It's a great replay and some perhaps indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. Fans are anticipating the reversal. Hard to argue with that visual evidence, James. It would negate a 31-yard pass play to Adonica Sanders, who had that game winner against Duke of 36 yards and a 31-27 win on October 9th in Durham for Georgia Tech, one of three victories this season. What a big call coming right here. I, I don't see how you don't bring it back. Low snap. You know, was he was he controlling it when that knee was down? Perhaps the question. We've, we've had, I think, three big reviews, all dealing with the knees, knees being down, just to just to add to the excitement to the drama of this one here in the Hard Rock today. So if that is the case, the ball will be marked at the 11-yard line, and it looks like as they bring him back out on the field, that's exactly what's going to happen here. Knees down, has control of the football. Yep. And they're moving the chains back there now. No official word you yet. Got, you got to get the clock right as well, James. True. It's going to be a loss of six if and when the call gets overturned and we're being told that it will be they're just trying to spot the football as you can see Gary Patterson taking a look at it after further review it was determined that the, the quarterback's knee was down in possession of the ball at the 11 and a half yard line by rule that, that qualifies for a 10 second runoff therefore the clock stop should have stopped with 49 seconds Please reset the game clock to 39 seconds, and the clock will start on my signal. It will be second down. So instead of a 31-yard gain, it's a loss of seven. The ball back near the 11-yard line, and the runoff, 39 seconds to go in the fourth. Oh, it's a big time party here on second down and 16. The Jackets backed up in the hard rock right now. Sims right near his own goal line. Incomplete to Gibbs beyond his reach.
Georgia Tech's lost two in a row, three of their last four games. Four losses this season by fewer than 10 points each. And unless they come up with a dramatic play here, they could be headed to the same fate against Manny Diaz and the Canes. Eight of 19 on third down in this ball game for Jeff Collins and the Jackets. Looked like Sanders making the grab on the sideline. Coach Collins wants to spot it. Refs will put it at the 23 yard line. Obviously two down territory for Georgia Tech. They got 12. Got out of bounds too. How about the one handed grab from Sanders. Keeping the left foot down as well James as he makes the grab. Incredible grab. Yes has control with that left hand. Gets the cleat down. And a great throw. James Williams almost gets a hand on it. So this is it. First and foremost, you got to get four yards. Maybe get up and stop that clock. One for one on fourth down of the game for Georgia Tech. Got to have it. Low snap. Sims. Flag is out. Caught by Gibbs. There is a flag behind the play. He certainly has enough yardage for the first down. But there is a penalty marker on the field after the play by Gibbs and the pass from Sims. Holding. Number 72, offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat four pass. Weston Franklin coming in for the injured Mikey Minahan at the center position. Well, and he's getting beat. He's getting run over, and he just just pulls him down just to try to save the day, getting a little bit of help. They call a holding on him, and this is a Georgia Tech team that hasn't been penalized that much here this season, but when they have, they've just been crushers, and a couple of those here in the second half of this game. Fourth and 14. Sims with air under it. It's out of bounds. It's incomplete. And it's Miami football. 13 seconds left. The U. Seconds away from its third straight victory. A one point win at home against NC State. A four point win on the road at Pitt. And could this be a three point victory against Georgia Tech? A single snap away for Tyler Van Dyke, Red Dyke at Miami. And that is your ball game. The Canes improved to five and four, three and two in conference play, and they've won three in a row in the ACC. Two here, and that road win at Pitt last week. Banged up a little bit here today. Go get all the ice down in South Florida and ice it up because they're heading up to the panhandle to take on the Florida State Seminoles, a big rival game, trying to make it four in a row next Saturday. Here's the drive brought to you by Land Rover. Well, and it's the winning points. Yeah, it starts with Harley. Who